always energy aspect, and the energy is basically the dominant part of physical chemical processes there. So in chapter one, when we're in chapter one and chapter two, when we're introducing chemical changes there, physical changes there, uh, one of the slides that's energy. Well, we have to deal with energy. In this particular chapter, we are going to be looking at what is energy. Well, by definition, energy is the capacity to do work or transfer heat. Okay, so that's how we define energy. Energy is something that we can use <coughs> to do work for us. And, uh, and there are different forms of energy, as we know. There are elect electrical energy, and the solar energy, and there's a kinetic energy, and, uh, um, and uh, potential energy, all that. So and some forms of the energy there, and we would say electrical energy, heat, or thermal energy, light or radiant energy, and nuclear energy, chemical energy, and so on and so forth. And they all take <coughs> different forms. However, in the end, all of these things can be used by us to do work for us, or we can use them to transfer heat. So, and uh, these are the different types of energy. There are different uh, energies uh, presented to us in different forms. However, when we categorize energy, we try to categorize energy in two big categories, and that would be the uh, potential energy and the kinetic energy. Now, potential energy is something that's stored in a matter. Now, say if you have fuel, jet fuel, when you burn the fuel there, the energy is being released, and while you use that energy to power your engine, and that's how you drive the car and the plane and all that. So, the potential energy is being uh, released during the process of using the, uh, uh, the fuels there. So, you're being converting the uh, chemical energy into thermal and mechanical energy, and to do work for you. And uh, there's radiant and thermal energy, that's another type of uh, energy. Okay. So lightning converts electrostatic energy into radiant and thermal. So when lightning strikes on, say, a tree, uh, tree trunk, and you go there and you see burn marks there, so there are a lot of heat involved in there. Okay. And uh, the classification of energy, though, is that we try to classify energy into what we call kinetic energy, energy associated with the motion of particles, whether it's atoms or molecules or what have you. Okay. So if you have a car driving at 70 miles, don't do that. 60 miles per hour, you know, you're moving at a fairly fast pace. And the, the energy possessed by that car is, is what we call the kinetic energy. And it, kinetic energy has something to do with the motion of the particles there. And in physics, we can actually calculate kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, we talked about it in the uh, in chapter five, EK equals to one half of MV squared. Yeah. So mass has something to do with kinetic energy. How fast you are moving has something to do with kinetic energy. Okay. And the second type of energy would be potential energy. Potential energy has something to do with the relative location where you are. Say if you have a block and you put it on the floor and you use the floor as the reference point, then we say, well, there's no potential energy in that block. If you take that block and you move it up to the ceiling, uh, to the roof there, then there is a relative height between the roof and the floor and the reference point that you're using then we say that block has a lot of potential energy. If we push that block off the roof, then the potential energy will be converted into kinetic energy. So when the block hits the ground, it's gonna damage the, uh, well, whatever the block hits, it's gonna do damage. And the energy is being used to, to do work, sometimes useful work in this case, uh, uh, harmful work. Okay. So potential energy are the energy stored in the structure of a compound. And say, if you form a chemical bound between the two, uh, two uh, atoms there, when they react with one another, when they form a chemical bound, there is a certain amount of energy stored in there. Breaking chemical bound requires energy. Forming chemical bound releases energy. So it, for a chemical process, for a chemical reaction physical process, whether the energy is required or released, it depends on how much energy we need when you know when you do chemical reaction there, it's a recombination of different types of atoms to one another. So the total energy required to break all the old chemical bound versus the total energy released when all the new chemical bonds uh, chemical bounds are formed, then the difference between those two will decide whether a process is what we call endothermal, endothermic or exothermic. Okay. So potential energy is something that's stored in an object, an energy associated with the position uh, or composition of the object. Yeah. Okay. And another term that we always use is thermal energy, but thermal energy is actually, I go kinetic energy because it's associated with the 
the heat transfer. Yeah. So the basic classification for energy, we have kinetic energy, we have potential energy. And sometimes we also use the term thermal energy. Thermal energy is a form of uh, energy there. And then it belongs to, it's a form of kinetic energy. Yeah. So these are the two big categories of, the, of the, uh, when we try to classify energy. We have kinetic, we have uh, potential. Okay. Now, in the chemical reaction and the physical process, these two different types of energy are always converting in one form to another, or from one form to another. Okay. And one thing that we do want to uh, remember here is that uh, energy is conserved, just like matter. You do not create nor destroy energy. And the total amount of energy at the beginning should equal to the total amount of energy in the end. And when we try to classify energy there, again, energy by definition, capacity to do work, and the kinetic energy because of the motion, potential energy because of position and composition. Okay. So these are the uh, things that we want to uh, 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 lay out before we go any further. And potential energy, kinetic energy can be converted. So a water mill, for example, when the water flow from a higher elevation and hit the water mill, and then that kinetic energy is actually being turned uh, uh, the, the potential energy for the water, uh, the water possessed at a higher elevation, as it flowed down, and that potential energy is being converted into uh, kinetic energy. And if you if if you have ever been to Mount Vernon and Washington Estate there, not on the visitor center side, not on the where his residence part, on the other side across the street there, and there's a large farm there, and there's a water mill, and uh, at that time we don't have electricity. So a lot of work has to be done. Those farm works are very hard labor. So uh, uh, smart people then um, figured out, well, water carries energy. So when the water flow, water carries energy. So you can have a large water mill, and the water mill, uh, when the wheel turns, uh, has water flow down. And you can use that uh, to do a lot of work there. So if you haven't been there, and I suggest after this class, if you're not taking him one or two, go there and uh, have a visit. It's a beautiful place there. Yeah, so you can see potential energy, kinetic energy, transforming, uh, trans uh, 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 converting uh, from uh, from one form to another. So in this case, the conservation en of energy. This is the uh, the thing that we always need to remember. The law of conservation of energy that is that you do not create nor destroy energy. So if you push a ball on the spring, the spring will store a lot of potential energy because of the position. Now if you release your hand that potential energy will be converted into uh, into kinetic energy. So the ball is shooting into the air. Now, when the ball shoots into the air, eventually the ball will come back down. So when it reaches certain height, all of the kinetic energy is converted into potential energy. And then when it starts to fall again because of the gravity, then the potential energy is being converted back into kinetic energy. So it's always, energy is always conserved. And that's the, the key thing that we need to remember. And that makes things a little bit easier for us to figure out how much energy is involved in a particular physical chemical process here. Okay. So we introduce what we call a state function. Energy is a state function. And I failed to inform you that your homework is also a state function. You can choose to do a little bit of homework every day, or you can choose until the night before it's due and work everything together. And what matters here is that you need to turn in your homework on the due date, so it's a state function. It doesn't matter how you do it, and you just have to do everything there. So the state function, uh, what we have here, another analogy here, is a elevation